Here is speed. Playback, playback. Welcome to A Social Place from Amalite Studios and Emil Narva, which is me. I'm a music video director, filmmaker, been in the game since I was 17. And along the way, I've worked with some of the most amazing talents in the whole world. In our first ever season of A Social Place, I've invited some of my fellow creatives to join me in sharing their stories of how they found their way into the industry. Welcome to A Social Place. Jeff Tings. What's going on, man? Glad to have you. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. Known each other for a long time, mm-hmm, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been great to watch your progression. You yeah, know, not sure. o- not only from like dancer to creator yeah. to, to all these amazing things that you're known for, but yeah. also now you're an entrepreneur, right? And mm-hmm, you're mm-hmm. creating different businesses. Yeah, and yeah. you know, I think what's great with what you're doing is you're leaning into your passions. You know, which Definitely. I think is is key. Obviously. Definitely appreciate it. Who is Jeff Tings? What 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 do you do? Yeah, so um, I'm I'm Jeff Things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we got that part already, but uh, I uh, do social media. I do uh, filmmaking, photography, dance. I used to do acting, etc. So right now, I'm in like my social media kind of genre, filming genre mainly right now for sure. Yeah, yeah. Which well, crazy. I mean, I'm so glad to have you on because I think that like obviously when TikTok came about, mm-hmm. I thought it was like crazy. Yeah, and like, a lot of my yeah. friends who are in the industry were like, "Fuck," you know, like just trying to like n- be neggy on it. Yeah, the everybody, whole time. everybody was like that. Like no matter where you went, it was like I remember when I first was getting to TikTok and I went back to Dallas and yeah, um, I'm making it inside of a mall I think and I'm I'm getting the craziest looks and I'm like, yeah, like <laughs> I'm it's just crazy. trying to have fun. Like this is crazy, but everybody will like nag on you. Like you'll almost get bullied for the fact that you were like making a tiktok draw it's crazy you know, yeah. like, i remember i was speaking to this um record you know a, a commissioner at a record label about a big music video yeah. and i said oh we should do this on tiktok as well we should like da-da-da. and and they were like what is isn't tiktok just like beautiful people dancing right, and i was right, like exactly. no that's not like that's an element of it that's yeah. like saying oh isn't music videos just like people singing songs mm-hmm. it's like yeah yeah, it's yeah exactly. my, it, you, <laughs> ultimately yes yeah. if you want to simplify it right but, and i think what's so interesting as well is like because we you know, we knew each other mm-hmm. pre TikTok, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. In the traditional, yeah. when you were kind of dancing and mm-hmm. acting, and yeah. I was directing. Yeah. And, you know, how did you get into it? All? Like, how, like, what even got you pre blowing up on TikTok and stuff? Yeah. How did you get into it? All? Um, the way I got into it was right after um tour with pretty much actually you know just after tour kind of vibes of just kind of. So what's you were on next. tour with pretty much. Yeah, yeah, for their FOMO tour, and then got after you. that. Filming, I, mm-hmm. filming, right, yeah, yeah. right, right. And then after that, I met with Chase, Chase Hudson, Little Huddy is his name on TikTok. Oh yeah, and, I love um, Little Huddy. We yeah, had like yeah, a project yeah. we were doing together for my friends, like brand, and we ended up making a TikTok, and we made two, and one of them blew up, and the other one did all right, and that other one blew up later on. But it was, was like, he oh, already, dang. was he already popping on? TikTok? Yeah, he was already popping. This is when this is when Hype House was first like a thing. It, it wasn't even called Hype House yet. It was like just the first main TikTok creator house ever made. And that's who was when in it in that at that? It stage? was like Little Huddy, uh, Thomas Petro, yeah, D- Daisy Keach. It was like a whole different Alex Warren and like his his girlfriend Cover. Like all these different people, like different brands of people that's when Charlie D'Amelio was first getting into it Tony uh, Tony and uh, Andreas Lopez was getting into it like it's it crazy like, yeah. that we talk about it like it was like so long ago oh it was yeah the beginning, no, exactly. but it was really recent wasn't yeah it? no that it wasn't was that bad two years ago two years maybe? ago yeah literally. yeah beginning wow. 2019 to 2020 was like the era of when everything was like really really like kicking in and then Hype House got, got announced I think January something and then that's when everything started just kind of going from there. And so you made two videos with Chase. Yeah. And one they, popped off. One popped off and Chase was the one who was like, bro, like, like do it. <laughs> like, just yeah. get into it. And I, and I was like, all right. So you weren't on it. This was on his channel. You... Oh, my channel. My oh, channel. oh, so you put it on your channel. Yeah, on my channel. He was like, yo, because we were there. We just started making videos. And I was like, yo, Chase, let's make this video. We made one. And then I had another idea popped in. My other idea was the one that, that popped off. And after that, it was kind of like he introduced me to everybody at the house, et cetera. And, and it just got. Well, because I guess you were coming at it from such a different lens, right? Because mm-hmm. you were coming at it from the cr- director yeah, yeah. lens, almost exactly. like the behind the camera exactly. lens. And 
then I guess you were able to then pivot into being in them. Mm -hmm. How much kind of conceptualizing goes into them? Do you spend a lot of time coming up with the ideas and how you're going to kind of execute them? I mean, them? it just depends. Uh, certain things, like I do mainly dance content. So like if I'm copying a dance and it's like just copying a dance, that doesn't take too long because obviously I have a background in dance. But making a new trend, maybe take another like five to 10 minutes max to kind of like get like a nice little dance yeah. going and I post it out and see if it does well. Typically, it's not super long to like, you know. And you're choreographing them mm -hmm. yourself, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. So you'll choreograph it, it pops off, and then everyone's basically doing your yeah, choreography, yeah, exactly. right? That, now that's a trend on TikTok. And mm -hmm. then did, was it kind of consistent or did it? Uh, no, no. I mean, it was consistent on the fact of how motivated we were to make content, for sure. We we're all like, yo, this is sick. Like, this is all fresh, all new. And at the time, TikTok was popping at the time, yeah. too. So like, we we're all all like oh yeah this is it we're making it making it doing our thing but making trends isn't necessarily consistent because you have to make a trend and if people like it then the trend could possibly start going up if people don't really mess with the trend then it just that's just one trend you made that didn't really do anything you know yeah. so it's like i make a trend here and then maybe like three months later i'm in another new trend and now that trend's actually going up you know etc so it's just like a music video really isn't it? yeah it's like oh like we were just talking about this earlier like i've buried so many music yeah. videos that i yeah. didn't like you know that just yeah, you make them and they don't land. And then you know? you're just like, oh, okay, well, <laughs> try again, I guess, next time. When do you think you first were like, whoa, this is like, because you've you got 5 million followers right now. 300K uh, is when I realized I was like, okay, this is going somewhere, you know? And then I think that's when I hit my first trend, actually, too. It was one by Bozzy. I don't remember the song of it. It's like, I can't take you there. Oh, yeah, 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 that, yeah. so that one I made that one and that one did pretty decent did like maybe 500,000 videos on it and that one you're just making purely out of passion it's not yeah. like because you know sometimes they do like paid promotion yeah, and stuff like that exactly. that was just for fun yeah. literally yeah. you know what's funny actually about that trend the reason I made it was because back then I had this homegirl named Faith yeah. uh, Faith Ordaway and she was visiting so she was staying at my place she was visiting the song came up and I heard her name Faith said put some faith in me and I was like oh what the heck this is cool so I made the trend based off because I heard her name in the song no way and then it was just funny because then it actually blew up and I'm like oh snap alright well that was my first trend I ever blew up too and I was like this is, this is sick and so when of trend blows up you're able to basically see all of the videos that were made with that dance yeah. right what you do is you make your own sound and once you make your own sound people would do it under that sound and then you'll pretty much see all of it or the sound that you did it on it will just be under that sound as well so it doesn't matter where you do it it's easier if you make your own sound because you, you get to see it everything that went down on your and sound. if you make your own sound do you have to remix the song at all or does it just no you just have to basically just re-upload the sound on to TikTok. Got you, yeah. got you. Well, and then you can obviously see all of the mm -hmm. kind of analytics. Exactly. And so you've done a bit of directing, right? You mm -hmm. kind of like, mm -hmm. so you directed for Taylor. Uh, Taylor Holder, Holder yeah, 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 for sure. How many videos was that? Uh, we did one official music video for him, but I've obviously done a bit of stuff on like the lower end of it and also for Charlie Jordan as well. And how, how was that process? The process of like making the music video? Yeah, making the music video, and I guess we talk about this a lot. Yeah, just making music videos, but also making them with your friends, right? They're like yeah, yeah. your friends. So yeah. how's that process? Oh, it was. It's, it's always really fun. Obviously, like definitely being one of the only ones like in that industry that was like kind of used to the whole music video styling and how, yeah. how things kind of go hand in hand. Explaining it to them was definitely more of like the all right. Listen, it it gets expensive. Okay, like it yeah. could definitely get expensive. If you wanted this, you want this. Like I can make it happen. You know, it just got to give me time to because with they self-funding them projects. yeah yeah for sure yeah, for sure, yeah. Right. because no one's with any labels or anything like that no because they these people were all already kind of successful yeah yeah, yeah for like, sure in for the sure. space mm -hmm. so were you the only one that was like really coming from the traditional yeah. industry yeah, yeah. yeah well charlie jordan has been doing like the film stuff like she's had one of the homies pearson he's been helping charlie film stuff all the time because she used to travel Travel, do travel filmmaking all the time. Oh, um, right. And she then, came from travel yeah, vlogs. Exactly. And stuff, and then COVID right. happened and everything slowed down a lot, obviously. So, oh. um, so that's how I ended up working with her at some point and doing some stuff with her. And one of the things that I did do with her actually got recognized by Paramount Pictures. And then that's how I got the connection to Paramount Pictures now. So that was a cool, cool little project. But yeah, I mean, really, it's mainly just like, explaining how things really have to work and when taylor first gave me like the little uh the budget that we had he didn't understand that like i was going to get a full team <laughs> so yeah. he, he pulled up he's like oh snap like jeff you really you're really doing this i'm like yeah i 
it's what I, I do. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. Like, it grows very, yeah, very for quickly. Sure, for sure. One question I had is like coming from a traditional dance background mm -hmm. into TikTok dance world, like what was that transition like? TikTok dancing is hard as butt, by the really, way. It is yeah. actually hard because it's a it's two different types of dancing. It's like Yeah, go on. You have regular hip hop dancing, like almost like tour dancing or like competition dancing, which is very like sharp. Click link, click link, click, 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 yeah, click, like click, full click. out. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like it's super sharp, super like a very certain style of dancing. Then you have TikTok dancing, which is not so like in your face. It's kinda like almost more like personality. Yeah, it's almost driven. like a it's almost like a natural dance, if that makes sense. TikTok is very natural. So you have to learn to almost like not put all that flavor yeah, into it. You have yeah. to kind of almost in a way like dumb it down, you know? But and yeah. that was definitely before. Nowadays it's a lot better where it comes down to actual dancing, etc. Like people are actually hitting like tick, 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 cool. You know, where it's yeah. like cool and it's getting dope because now it feels like it's becoming more of like a dancer app. Versus like it just being like some cute dance stuff that you can do. Yeah, I've seen some like really creative dance in there as well. I yeah, think yeah. People starting to learn and understand how to like have that style of dance yeah. but in a vertical. Yeah, exactly. And like coming in and coming out. And but I know what you mean. The kind of like laid back personality driven dance mm -hmm. is very engaging, yeah. isn't it? It's yeah. like you kind of just end up watching it because yeah. you're you feel like you're watching that person, yeah, not exactly. not just the dance. Is it? It's not. It's not a performance. You know. It's like it's like you're just dancing with friends almost in a way yeah. you know e on camera even if you're by yourself you're doing a dance you're kind of like showing your friend that's kind of how i think of it where it's like i don't need to be performing for tiktok all the time you know that's not how all these dances should go all these dances a lot of them are just like very like friendly very like ah this is a vibe kind of yeah. vibe like almost like you'll do the dance at a party i try to make it a little more like the a little complicated a little more advanced kind of vibe yeah. just so that i can slowly peek in a harder style of dancing more and more and more the viewers and the audience same with movies right they become mm -hmm. more intelligent mm -hmm. i guess and probably they you're probably making these kids like better dancers yeah, so yeah, yeah. they are probably ready for like a little more yeah. than just like two moves repeated and also my boy jb uh, let me not forget him but if, if you look at the styling in 2019 Versus the styling in 2022, you'll be like, "What the heck? Like yeah. this is a, this is a real difference." So it's, it know? has evolved a lot. Exactly, exactly. Which is amazing. Which is great. I love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah. yeah. Even just hearing you speak now, it's clear that like the space and the people that you kind of came into mm -hmm. were more like creators, I mm -hmm. guess. And mm -hmm. then what's it like collaborating with all these other people? Collaborating with people that aren't dancers, and we're doing dance content, etc. It's very funny because. Um, it would be a certain dance that you, me personally, since I obviously have a dance background, I wouldn't think to dance hard, right? I'll pick up the dance. We'll, 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 I'll be like, all right, I already got it. They're like, yo, you watched it two times. How did you get it already? Yeah. I'm like, well, it was simple. <laughs> and then yeah. they're like, yo, I've been trying to learn this dance for five days. I'm like, oh, snap. Well, uh, let me try to help you out then. Let's figure it out. But it's it's always a bit of sometimes I bet it's a lot so of helpful process. when you help them oh yeah for sure for sure even if i think about like i i can't dance if i was trying yeah. to learn from a video versus learning from like my friend that's going oh, for like sure. oh it's this 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 for sure this is like if you if you ever see like me and markel like dancing markel he um he's um it's a black creator he's one of my uh closest friends i, I love him it's funny how we work because every single time a, a dance would come out even with um my my homegirl Anna, um, they'll show me the dance. I'll learn the dance as quick as I do. Then I'll just refer it back to them because they'll learn it quicker. So they'll give me their dance they want to do. I'll see it. I'll look at it for like a minute, learn the dance real quick. I'd be like, all right, cool, I got it. And then I'll teach it to them. And that's kind of yeah. how the whole process right. works. So you're kind of like chore choreographing it. Yeah, almost. Yeah, like yeah. Basically, yeah. I became the choreographer and this is my dance. I'm just teaching them how to do it, almost in a way, you know. So yeah. that's kind of like the relation that we have, and it's kind of funny because you'll you'll just see it happen where it's like, oh, this dance is so sick. Like, all right, la Jeff. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. I got you. I got you. Don't worry. Do my thing. Uh, uh, uh. All right, cool. I got it. Uh, minute later, now I'm teaching them. It's, it's a full process. Say say what I would do is at night I would find the ones I want to do. Right, do all that. At night time, be like, like okay, here's my three. Stuff. Here's my three to maybe max six, right? For me, I learn pretty fast, so it doesn't take that long. So I would probably take to film all three to six videos. It'll take maybe an hour, maybe. Wow. You know, now the rest of your day is all free.
you know? Yeah. So then at that point, it's just about how do you want to spend it? Now, the thing is, being an influencer, you have to still entertain your fans because they're not going to just win a see those three videos. You still have, like, Instagram. You have yeah. to have Twitter, all that stuff. So you still have to be able to work past the TikTok side. TikTok was definitely one of the most important. But TikTok, and then you do your stories throughout the day. But realistically, you're not working like a nine to five. You're you're working whenever you want to work. And if you do it smart, you work very little. I've always said this. I respect kind of, you know, influencers or whatever you kind of want to say creators so much. It's a lot of brain space, you know, because obviously I, I, you know, I do a bit of social media and I find it like incredibly draining because it's just it's so constant right you know at least with um when i make a music video i'll like be down and then i'll have to go like crazy ramp up like yeah, massive yeah. shoot and then come down yeah yeah when with social media it just feels very consistent mm -hmm. every day right, right is what you're saying so in in the aspect of us making content should definitely be typically very consistent not in the aspect of brand deals that fluctuates all the time until you have like certain brands that are paying you monthly for say, you're always making money based off the brand deals and song promos you made for that month. You know, yeah. so one month you can make you know thirty thousand, forty thousand dollars. Next month you can make ten thousand dollars because it just fluctuates like that. You yeah, know, yeah. so that's that's the only thing that I think is a downer when it comes on social media. So that's why you have to put your time into other things as well as soon as you get used to it then it's like okay i understand what's going on you know yeah. and then you just like it just becomes normal day life this is my question for you actually what do you think about the phone cameras becoming how they are now you know how they're becoming a lot more advanced than what they think what do you think about that whole series of it i believe in new technology and mm -hmm. new apps i feel like you have to as a creative you have to really feel like you understand where things are going and i mm -hmm. think for me, what I love about the phone is I think it gives access to people that have not previously had access to the industry. Right, like, right. I've always said, like, I'm always jealous of musicians, right? Because they can make music for free. Mm -hmm. They can basically just create for free. Yeah. But I can't, right? I have to have a fat budget yeah. and a big crew and, like, Next. all these things. When now with phones, right, you, like, I've actually recently pitched a couple of big videos mm -hmm. to shoot on a phone. Because really? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, listen, like, forget how we're going to make it. This yeah. is the concept. Yeah. That, like, I'm going to shoot on a phone and mm -hmm. it's going to cost you way less money. Yeah. In your opinion, what works on TikTok and what doesn't? So I, we, we came to realize at some point that the more natural it looks, the better it performs. Mm, yeah. At one point, we were doing, like, almost like studio like stuff yeah, like in the right. studio for tiktok and everything dancing like a like a very like set up location and it it would do okay but at the same time it would be like uh not really so it just depends on it'll be like a hit or miss a lot more with that versus like for surely we know this is going to do well if not average you just put the camera you know? somewhere it feels real exactly yeah. so that's where we came to that's like more of like what does hit now there is the the exception of like depending on the situation why there's a studio there if there's a studio for us to do regular tiktok stuff then it wouldn't typically always perform great now if we're in a studio because there's an actual event or there's like bts for music videos happening inside that studio then it yeah. makes it's different because that is the real life because that's actually why the studio is being used not just to make a tiktok dance that we could do anywhere yeah we talk a lot about kind of mental health on on this podcast and just I guess, you know, alongside that question, just like, what was it like mentally trying to kind of, I'm sure there was loads of excitement around when mm. you were blowing up, mm. right? Like, mm. I, you know, we, we, we spoke about this as well, like in terms of like, if you have big success, right? There's a moment where it just you're getting gas. Like yeah. everyone's like, you're, you're amazing. Like it's just, it's mm. pure elation because yeah. you're kind of like growing. Yeah. Like how did you deal with that and like not lose yourself like, you know, in that. Old. So, one thing that I am actually grateful for, I'm blessed that, that it happened the way it did, is actually I didn't like have a session where I was like blowing up, blowing up. You know, it was it was always very like um, gradual, like how how my growth went, very very linear, like it just just like that. You know, it wasn't like uh, and then like that and up and out. It was like just straight straight line across. I was like growing naturally. Nothing crazy. And you were doing the work as I was well, doing the right? work. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I kept growing is because I was constantly doing the work. To it wasn't get to just like I one video and suddenly exactly. you're like exactly. a superstar. Now, yeah. uh, now, when you do make a trend, it does help a little bit. Yeah. Like I remember I went from, I think, 500K to 800K, I think. Or no, no, no. It's like 600K to 800K wow. for making one of the trends. One, one, really, really big trend first. So that, that's probably one reason why it helped. But 
went 200,000 followers. Not bad. Really, really good, actually. But it's never been to where it's like I was just constantly blowing up for certain things. All my stuff is very, like, like super linear, like, just easy. And creating easy that kind of solid fan base. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I'm happy about. So I never really had to deal with – and, I, I mean, no matter what, I still have people that – um that recognize me and that like you know oh my god you're like one of my favorite tiktokers i'm like yo i appreciate it and i'm blessed to be able to like you know be in a position but i i didn't have to struggle with blowing up regular and then trying to keep that momentum of blowing up you know do you think that that's because of who you are or your childhood or what because like you know you would say it was you would say it's gradual but really like i mean you went from like not like no no not known to mm-hmm. incredibly known yeah but that took oh. me two years yeah you know but some still, people I mean, some people it takes you know three months and they yeah. they're at you know three million followers four million followers you're like dang and then eventually you just you don't really know who they are anymore at a year in you know yeah. so i'm blessed to be able to be at a point where it did take me two years i i love being patient i love the 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 ride the the journey to yeah. a location versus the actual just getting to the goal at some point, it's going to work. And that's, I mean, that's kind of how I live my life is, you know, I just do what I want to do. I don't care if I'm getting paid to do it or not. It's if yeah. I want to do it, then I want to do it. And eventually the money will come along, you know. That's yeah. like the, the that. journey isn't the money. The journey is doing what you want to do. The reason I got into film, actually, was because me and Noah and Brandon, we made a video called, like, parkour or something like that. We're all, like, at a playground doing, like, some parkour stuff. But, like, it's like horse you know, like horse, like like the basketball game horse, you shoot and the other people have to make the same shot. Yeah, like yeah. It was the same thing, but you do it like parkour in the playground. And seeing that and we're having like the fun of seeing that all stuff, it was like, dang, this is sick. And that's kind of like what got me into filming. And that's when I started making, you know, videos myself, bought a camera, started doing wow. stuff like that. Yeah, shout out Noah yeah. Duran. Yeah, Noah shout Duran. No, the no, boy. Noah Duran introduced us. Oh, yeah, most definitely. He's a, he's a part of the Amalite squad. Oh. And what other things are you working on then? Filming is one of the things I'm getting back into hard right now, and I'm working on a project, almost like a Nike commercial, but for Boohoo, my um sponsor, and um, it's coming out really good, actually, like stupid good. I'm gonna send it over to you when, once I finish. I'd love it. to see. It. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the filming stuff is like is what I really want to get back into because I was like, man, this is like. Every time I make a video and and um, I get the response for it and it's always like it's like this is sick like no no one ever knows I do it though because yeah. I haven't done video like that since you know twenty nineteen or so so it's always funny when I get back into it and I get the response that I do and I'm just like dang dude and, and then like obviously like the real estate stuff as well like I'm doing all that stuff on the back end as well but. I think the main focus, realistically, for me is film. And so, yeah, my final question is, um, you know, I ask this to every guest, like, um, what advice would you give to someone who's trying to, like, kind of get into the social media space? Um, there's, like, three things that I think you should, or is it two? It might be two. One thing is consistency. Like, you've got to be consistent. Like, yeah. that's the biggest thing. Um, I struggle with it. A lot of to struggle with it just because of, you know, life does get busy. But if you can consistently make your three videos, three to six videos a day, mainly just three, just need three realistically, or just one video a day consistently, that's like, that's going to be the best thing to help you, you yeah. know, um, and do the things that people want to see. That's kind of like your next thing. It's just like, if you're doing everything you want to do, not saying it's bad, but if no one has yet to see that 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 are that really like that stuff, then you're going to be doing a long growth. Yeah, you've got to give growth. value to your you know, audience, exactly. right? Yeah. So I would say mix in the things that you know people want to see, as in like trends. You know, if there's a trend happening, put that trend into the things that you want to do as well, so that you know when they do come over to your page because they're seeing that video, they can look at other videos and be like, "Yo, and this is kind of dope too." You know, now yeah. they're liking what you're posting, now you're getting a, a, a fan base from what you like to do as well. So then eventually, when you just transfer over completely to what you want to do, then now you have a base for it. And now it works out, you know? Sure. Um, and then three is, is is to call out with people, realistically. It's like, that's yeah. like, people love nowadays collaborations, just team stuff. Like, if I was sure. in a group, if it was me and my two homies, like my, the, my boy Janai, I was here, and, and, and our other homie, all of us three, all together making videos, they'll love it because they like to see groups, like to see different personalities, et cetera. Sure. When it's one person, you can do you could do well, but it's not guaranteed that it would be 
as beneficial as if you were with the group. That's why when we all did all the house stuff, we were all growing significantly all the time. Yeah. Always growing, always growing. These people are growing, these people are growing because we're all collaborating with each other. It's like you, you see a bigger picture. You see a, a, a bigger image versus you're seeing one person. Sure. You know? But other than that, like I, I say, just be consistent, do you, be you, and, yeah. and then go from there. Well said, ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Tings.